So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the tactics behind Manchester United 3, Arsenal 2, how Arsenal pressed United quite well at points, but how United eventually broke them down, and what we can infer from this game about how Ranić will set up this Manchester United side. But before I get into the analysis, are you sick of the extortionate prices that football clubs are charging for their jerseys? Well, if you are, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com. A link will be left in the description because they sell very good quality, affordable football jerseys as well as tracksuits and retro jerseys as well. As a Manchester United fan, they have all the retro jerseys you could possibly want. They have the shirts from when Robin Van Persie was at Manchester United, all the way back to when Eric Cantona was there. I myself do have a Ronaldo 2003-2004 shirt, and it's one of my favourite shirts out of my whole collection, so I would definitely recommend Jersey FIFA for affordability and also quality. If you use the code Atlantis Football, not only will you be helping to support the channel, but you'll also get 5% off your order. So in possession in the build-up phase, we saw United use a 2-4-3-1 shape, with Fred and McTominay taking up their usual roles in the deep double pivot. Fernandes started in behind the centre forward Ronaldo as Rashford and Sancho held the advance width from the flanks. Arsenal would press them in a 4-4-2 shape, which allowed them to go man-to-man -man on McTominay and Fred, with the front two Odegaard and Aubameyang staying close together to cut off the passing lanes from the United centre-backs into the two midfielders. Throughout the first half, I thought Arsenal pressed fantastically. They did a great job of stopping United being able to play out from the back, each time Arsenal seemed to be luring United into the same possession trap. With the front two blocking off the passes into the midfield, the centre-backs would play a ball out wide, which is exactly what Arsenal wanted. As from here, because their midfield pushed up the pitch, creating a vertically compact pressing unit, the two wide midfielders Smith Rowe and Martinelli could push out to instantly pressurise Tellez or Dallo when they received the ball, with Partey or Elneny able to push up onto Fred or McTominay on that side to cut off the pass back inside, and this would then force United's fullback into a long pass down the line, giving Arsenal a better chance of winning possession. Before I go any further, I have set up a Patreon, and for just £5 a month, each week you'll get an extra Manchester United video, an extra Patreon voted exclusive video as well, and a weekly newsletter discussing all the topics in football in that particular week that I'm not able to make videos on. My first video was an overview of my whole thoughts on Manchester United and Ralph Ranić right now, how I see the future going, and my overall opinion on the appointment. So if you want to see that video, go over to my Patreon. I will be releasing consistent content on there, so if you want the exclusive of content go over there and you will be helping to support the channel as well but just by watching the video till the end and giving the video a like we will help the video in the algorithm and that's much appreciated as well. Arsenal's organised and coordinated 4-4-2 shape does have to be given credit however I think most of the problems that United had with playing out from the back came firstly from their possession shape in their defensive third and from the ball playing abilities of Fred and McTominay. I think Carrick should have deviated away from the 2-4-3-1 possession shape as with the midfield double pivot sitting together it allowed Arsenal to man-to-man -man press them quite easily in their 4-4-2 shape. If Carrick had instructed Fred to drop into the space wide of Maguire, this would have allowed Maguire and Lindelof to create a back three with Fred in position, which would have given United a wider base to circulate the ball around Arsenal, also causing Martinelli on the right side a problem, as he would often either have to push up onto Fred and risk a lofted pass over his head to Tellers, or follow Tellers' movement down the line and allow Fred to get on the ball and bring it down the left side a lot easier. If Arsenal wanted to commit fully to the man-to-man -man press, we could have seen Partey follow Fred into this position. However, I think he would have retained his zonal position, but this would have probably been the best scenario for Manchester United, as it would create a gap in Arsenal's midfield line, allowing Sancho or Fernandes to drift into that space and receive the ball directly, bypassing Arsenal's press. United also did a fairly good job of pressing Arsenal in their defensive third, but instead of dropping into a semi-passive 4-4-2 shape, United pressed in a 4-2-2 two shape, with Sancho and Rashford just behind Ronaldo and Fernandes, creating a shield around Thomas Partey, and we can even see here that Fred pushes up from a deeper position to pressurise Partey from behind, giving United five players in advanced central positions. Obviously because of the narrow shape, this does mean there's greater space on the flanks and say with Arsenal's pressing shape, so we did see Arsenal able to play through United's press in the early part of the game when Dallow didn't push up the pitch and Tavares was left open. Rashford's pressing showed exactly what we would see in terms of a change from Solskjaer to Ranić, as many wide attackers in this position when the keeper has the ball would drop off to cover the left back area and allow the left side of centre back to receive the ball. However, Rashford pushes up to apply the pressure and this is where we can see a well coordinated press when the right back pushes up to keep the press vertically compact. However, credit to Carrick, he recognised it and instructed Dallow to start higher up the pitch, 
meaning that when Rashford pushed to pressurise and create that V-shaped press on the centre-backs and Partey, when the ball was moved out to Tavares, he couldn't motor forward and break the press because Dalla was higher up to meet him and sustain the pressure. And here you can see even in the middle third, Rashford sits incredibly narrow, which is what we see from Liverpool's wide attackers. But also Dalla remains high and this stops Arsenal being able to just shift the ball from one side to the other and get Tavares to carry the ball forward. Arsenal in possession was shifting their 4-4-2 defensive shape to a 3-4-2-1 with Emil Smith-Rowe and Odegaard being the advanced midfielders, drifting ahead of Partey and Elneny, the double pivot, and dropping in between the lines with Martinelli and Tavares holding the whip from the flanks as Tomiyasu sat deep deeper with the two centre-backs. In terms of Arsenal in possession, they certainly weren't as impressive as they were without it in my opinion, but they still went into half-time with a higher XG than United, 0.45 goals to their 0.25, but the problem with Arsenal in possession is that they transition their attack far too slowly. When Ranić has been in charge of a few games, then we'll see how much quicker United are able to win the ball back and then have a chance at the other end, because that's what Gagan pressing is all about, but Arsenal lack this ability, firstly because I don't think they are instructed to do it, it seems like Arteta wants to play a methodical possession based style when they have the ball and so instead of playing quick vertical passes into advanced players to take advantage of the opposition team being out of their defensive shape they often instead prefer to circulate the ball and allow their own structured possession shape to take form before progressing the ball forward but secondly even though Arsenal do have Partey and Ben White who play these quick vertical forward passes very well to get the ball into the likes of Odegaard and Smith Rowe and allow them to drive into the space behind the midfield with Ben White also being excellent at playing those long driven passes in behind the back line but they still have the likes of El Nene and the fullbacks who don't have this same ability and during this game it was evident that in possession El Nene in particular is a liability. Arsenal have attackers that are better suited to a quicker transition in attack in my opinion. Aubameyang is best when he's able to make runs down the side and in behind the centre backs and players like Emil Smith-Rowe, Odegaard and Saka have great ball carrying ability and can pick a through ball in the final third as well so I think Arteta should have utilised that a lot more in this specific game to take advantage of United's players in more advanced positions and get in behind their midfield a lot more often. But we also saw how United could potentially utilise their counter press as an offensive weapon. So Vares is bringing the ball out of Arsenal's defensive third and plays a square pass into Thomas Partey, which acts as a counter press trigger, which sees Fernandes and Fred abandon their deeper positions to press the ball, whilst Ronaldo, instead of pressing the ball, positions himself to cut off the pass backwards, almost as though United are a triangle being compressed onto Thomas Partey. Now this is a lot riskier riskier than pressing how Arsenal were with their coordinated short movements, retaining their 4-4-2 shape, as if Partey doesn't have a poor touch and he can get the ball out of his feet quickly from this pass, because Rashford, but in particular Fred, have abandoned their zonal positions, one forward vertical pass into an Arsenal player in behind the press would take both presses out of the game and allow Arsenal to drive through into the Manchester United half. But if Fred wins the tackle after a poor Partey touch, which is what happens here, then United can counter from this press. And now Ronaldo has a ball with a 4v3 running at Arsenal's back line, which would not have been possible if United's attackers hadn't maintained high and central positions without the ball. This is why I think this sort of pressing style that Ranić will bring We'll see both Rashford and Sancho and even Greenwood, Martial and Ronaldo improve because they'll be getting more shooting opportunities because usually their chances are created when United play through a size defensive shape. So just logically, opposition players are within their positions and so chances are harder to develop and when they do come, you're under a lot more pressure with opposition defenders in close proximity to come across and either make a tackle or put in a block. In this situation, after Fred wins the ball, United can attack directly into the space in front of Arsenal's centre-backs which under a more methodical possession based system, they would only receive the ball in when they were followed by a defender pushing up to close them down. That means if you're a player who is a good finisher under pressure, even if your movement of the ball isn't great, then you should still get a lot of chances that you can profit from if you're in a counter press like this. Rashford is a very good finisher across the keeper from either side, so it suits him perfectly, being able to either open up his body or drill the ball across the keeper after United win the ball back centrally, and he can make a run down the side of the centre back to receive the pass. Martial could also benefit from it because I think out of all of United's forwards, his movement is the worst, and so playing in a 
counter press, his movement can be a lot simpler, as rather than having to make a double movement in the box to find space, or make a run in behind your fullback around the box, you can simply make a straight run down the outside of the attack, receive the ball, and in one or two touches, you could have a shooting opportunity. But Sancho as well should benefit because he's a very composed passer around the box, and when running at pace and under pressure, at Borussia Dortmund he showed this, as they were able to break quickly and they would often have Hakimi and Haaland running beyond the ball into space, giving him those passing opportunities to create chances like what Ronaldo had after that press, and Sancho's timing and weight of pass was on the money most of the time and he knew when to play a simple pass, being a very good player at not overplaying and taking the wrong option in these situations, as Cristiano Ronaldo did on this occasion. Now Arsenal did take the lead in bizarre fashion and it's hard to take much from that, except that De Gea should have stayed on his feet to at least the ball is far outside the box, as it's too much of a risk to take the chance to go down and play for the foul because obviously if the referee doesn't blow his whistle then it's pretty much an open goal which was what happened and Emil Smith Rowe credit to him he took the shot and opened the scoring for Arsenal. Towards the end of the half United began to play out of their defensive third a lot more with Arsenal players slower in the press with spaces now opening up in behind the front two and this allowed United to work the ball into Arsenal's half down the left side a lot more often which is where the equaliser came from. For United's first and third goals we would see how effective Fred can be when allowed to make forward runs into the box. Sancho has the ball here on the left side and you can see Fred is making his move up the pitch and when Sancho gets into this position you can see Fred is making an underlapping run and now El Elneny has to get tighter to Fred as you can see White is being held centrally by Fernandes with Gabriel also picking up Ronaldo so El Elneny has to be responsible for following Fred's movement to the near post. He doesn't do this and so when Sancho feeds the ball into Fred with a perfectly weighted reverse pass, Fred plays another reverse pass into Fernandez, who by this point has backed off of White to open up that passing lane. He allows the ball to roll across his body before calmly slotting the ball into the far corner past Ramsdale. For the third United goal, it was Fred's bursting movement into that same area, which led to Sancho's well-weighted pass through again. And this time Fred recognised that Odegaard was making a tackle from the wrong side in the box and he gets his body across and waits for the contact, winning the penalty from where Ronaldo would score the winner. Now, before I analyse United's second goal, we do have to look at what led to Arsenal's equaliser and what United could have done to prevent it. So the ball goes into Partey in central midfield and I think if this is earlier on in the game, we do see Fred immediately push out, being sure to cut the pass into Odegaard in behind him as well, but ultimately getting out quickly to stop Partey being able to turn and play forward. However, Fred is slow to push out whether this is from fatigue or just a lack of reading of the game, but because of this lack of pressure and United's extremely narrow midfield, Partey is so much space on the right side and his pass is weighted perfectly. Tellez is also caught not being positioned wide enough and so can't get to Martinelli to stop the cut back to the edge of the box and this is also why I said Fred should have took the gamble and pushed out to close down Partey as even though he did hold his position he's unable to get back to Odegaard and so the ball is cut back and Odegaard superbly with his weaker right foot strokes the ball into the bottom corner. For United's second goal which was the most impressive of the three I would say that we saw the benefits of keeping attackers high up the pitch bitch and of picking Dalla over Wambasaka. The ball is one back and we can already see that Rashford's high position puts him in the perfect position to exploit Tavares being caught up the pitch and Dalla shows the importance of quick forward passing in this situation. If Wambasaka was here, what we may have seen him do is take longer to get the ball out of his feet, allowing Arsenal to close him down and I doubt he would have had the ability to come inside on his left foot and play the pass to release Rashford and here we see the benefit of playing Rashford on the right side as he's able to accelerate with the ball into a crossing position and rather than just rushing to put the ball across the box he slows down waits for the passing lane to Ronaldo to open and drills a fantastic ball across and Ronaldo's finish is top level just guiding the ball with the inside of his boot into the far corner showing why Ronaldo has to start in this side as his movement and finishing in the box allows Manchester United to fully take advantage of these counter pressing situations. So this game showed how United's offensive ability is going to improve as their counter press becomes more coordinated and more intense under Ranjik and why having attackers with quality in the final third can make a massive difference and you can't just fully focus on pressing ability and neglect the ability to put the ball into the back of the net as even though United may be able to press more assertively and intensely without Ronaldo without him in the side they aren't going to be able to take advantage of these half chances around the box which Ronaldo is an expert at finishing. 
So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you get notified when my videos come out. Go to the description to check out some of my other videos as well. Also, if you want two exclusive videos and a newsletter each week, sign up to my Patreon. It will help support the channel and you'll get some extra content as well.